Well, good morning. It's 9.04 a.m. on, I think, Tuesday or Thursday, I think. Thursday the 1st. Well, woke up this morning and, uh, to me, my brain's turned off again. Yesterday, or the day before, I was happier, had more energy in my brain, and today, it just doesn't seem to be working like it did. The only thing I've done is go to 7-Eleven for a pop, and Tim Hortons for a muffin. I don't think they'd put stuff in my food, and I sure hope not. Can't put anything in a fountain drink. And, uh, just doesn't make sense to me. I know it's not a death sentence, in this, there's no death sentence in this country. And medication, all it does is, uh, tends to harm the body. Like I said before, causing bodily harm, being fat, shutting down the brain so you can't dream. So basically a dead-like state. No mobi mobility and stuff like that, or motivation. So, uh, it should be illegal to put people on this type of medication that they put me on. It's a sad world. I really like to be happy and awake and live life normally without the discrimination of haters being male or female. I don't have an aggressive problem at all. I've never put anybody in the hospital. I have the right to defend myself in self-defense according to the human rights and by the Criminal Code of Canada, number 35, I understand, or 36, if struck or pushed or sprayed, I have the right to defend myself. A tone of voice is a tone of voice. It's not a threat. And uttering threats, well, we know what uttering threats is, and I've never done that. All I've done is given a scenario to some lady I forget her name is right now, other than Kathy, at social services. And she tried to have me charged for uttering threats. They put me in the psych ward twice now. The first time they discharged me, had me on Vilify, which gave me harm, weight gain, penis shrinkage, lack of brain motivation. They took me off after six months. Dr. Conway Desmond took me off of it. Thank goodness, I was off for seven months, and then the attack happened again in front of the Superstore. Superstore then called the RCMP to have me removed, so they handed me a letter, which I got mad because they were defending the Superstore and not protecting equally by the law, letting the Superstore deal with their own fucking bullshit. Yelled at a cop, threw some dumbbells at him stupidly that I had, some three-pounders, and broke somebody's window, and he charged me with mischief, not causing a disturbance or any threats, and he took me to the psych ward for the second time, which five or six cops had to show up at the door. And they all barged in to my house or apartment. Twice involuntary in the Comox Valley Hospital called St. Joe's Psych Ward and now dealing with it still. I've been off for seven months off of Invega, thank goodness, which brought me more harm, 60 pounds plus and no mobility and complete shrinkage of my penis which I see as harm. And hopefully I can get my life back together so I can be more mobile, be able to look for a job, be able to dream in life, and not be executed by a drug, or enslaved by one, or in jailed by one, because we do not have a death penalty in this country, or a lifetime in jail. If people have a problem with me, then I guess it's a cult. Because I don't threaten people. I walk in peace. 
I'm not like my brother who cows people and tries to act tough that way. All I do is live life. I don't need to be provoked or aggravated or any of the above because I'm poverty. Am I being picked on? And why would social services have an office in a psych ward? Period. Full time. Must mean they're picking on poverty all the time and they're taking people there so they can work out social service stuff or get them on it. Just doesn't make sense to me why there would be an office in a building like that. First time I was there, some woman came up to me with a piece of paper and said, here, sign this so the government will pay for your services. Never seen her in my life, don't know who she was. I thought she was a nurse. The second time, they didn't do it. Two years later, it's approximately that. That's the story. Don't need to be killed by a pill. Don't need a lobotomy. Don't need a castration. Because it's not going to change somebody from raging, or what they say, or having an anger problem, or anything like that. I don't know what else to say. Psychological abuse is child abuse. Neglect as well. And sexual abuse is another one for child abuse, which isn't going on. Abuse is abuse. The RCMP protect them and the government protects children from child abuse. So they protect the poverty as well. Ensure they have better nutri nutrients and food, and they might not have mental health problems. Might have to give out food stamps or something, or have a social work, work in a food store so they can go in there and buy food on a regular basis and pay for it that way so they're not using the food money for drugs, one might say. Find a new way to do it. We do it for refugees, we retrain them, bring them to the country, and they become citizens after 10 years. Immigrants come here, they work. And become citizens after 10 years. But we don't do anything for poverty, but say they choose to live that way. Nobody chooses to live in poverty. It's called discrimination once they're there. Choosing something is saying 10 options. You're all going to make the same wage now pick one of your ten options and go do it. If you don't like it, pick one of the other nine. But you have to stay doing it for at least two years. That sounds like a better choice than the definition of choice in any dictionary. Choosing one on one option is not a choice. It's forced upon you because that's your only choice to do. No difference than when I had to live on the street, social services with Judy Williams wouldn't allow me on it, period. They wanted me to do some stupid thing because at the time my grandfather's property was in probate. So I had to live on the street. I couldn't go back to my mother's house because she slapped me in the face. I didn't need to be assaulted by my mother again. And there was nowhere to sleep. I don't know what to say, but there's something wrong with the system of the insinuation of people on assistance or living in poverty that they're mentally ill. It's costing billions of dollars, I understand, to look after them in BC, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. And $10,000 a year is below poverty, which is I think $40,000, and that's the way it works. Thank you for listening to my YouTube station. You have a great day. This is Ross Jason Boehm Live on his free broadcast and freedom of speech.